to welcome you to Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just click on missionmatters.com and click on Become Our Guest to Apply. All right, so I am uh, very thrilled to have Kanar Vora on the, on the line today and to announce that, Kanar Vora, you are officially a published author with Mission Matters. Hey, I just want to say congrats, and I'm so happy to have released the book with you. So thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, Adam. All right. So for those that have not maybe caught some of the previous work that Kanar and I have done before, Kanar is a senior software, senior manager in software development over at Amazon. He's done a lot of great work. And in terms of his chapter, his book content, from good worker to great manager, great title for one. For two, I think it's a great topic that we I'm happy to shed light on. So Kanar, before we get into the book, before we get into what you're doing at Amazon and overall some of your vision for, we're recording this at the end of 2022 for everybody listening, going into 2023. But before we get into all that, Kanar, you know the drill. We're gonna start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Kanar, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Kanar, what mission matters to you? The mission that matters to me, Adam, is to take good engineers and make them into great managers, right? This has been my personal journey, so it's been much more easier for me to relate into. And I do see the same kind of model and concept applied to any individual contributor. They can be from different industries and different domains, but I feel like, you know, tech has become something big. You know, when I graduated, I'd never really saw tech becoming that big, but we've seen how the journeys come on uh, along for tech and the role of a manager to get work done through others has also become pretty significant. So that's my mission is to really help engineers become great managers. Great having you back on. So let's just dive right in. I don't want to assume that all of our, our new listeners caught some of the previous work we've done together. So maybe just uh, briefly, let's give a little bit of your background and really how you got into this position of wanting to help other engineers become great managers. Yeah, I'll go a little little back for anyone that may have not known my, my story, but uh, it really started with a fascination of seeing a computer for the first time when I was in the eighth grade, right? There are points in time in your life that you end up remembering, you know, very succinctly. And that one was one where I saw a computer, we were allowed only a limited amount of time every week to kind of go play with it, like, you know, learn, you know. MS-DOS, <laughs> for anyone that's been that old, no Microsoft uh, cooperating system, I learned the language basic. What that has led to, and the reason to mention that is, that started my journey into liking computers to the point where I actually given up other electives to only stay with computers throughout my college journey. Now, a, a sequence of things happened that led along with the internet wave that came in in the I would say the mid 90s, the 95, when the wave came in, that coupled with that, I think the tech boom just kind of started. I was very fortunate to have caught that. Now, as my career progressed from an engineer that used to code early on for desktop systems to then coding for browser-based systems for the internet, as we call it, I led to a fork in the road which says, hey, how do you grow yourself further? Right. Yeah. I think every engineer gets to that point and the two paths are either you go into the technical path, which I think is getting a lot more understanding now, but yeah. during my days, it was like, Hey, people management looks good. You should become a people manager. Right. Yeah. And, and that used to be a path. I was fortunate. I mean, again, I made all of some of those early, I'd say rookie mistakes, but I took that path. I'm very fortunate. I did because that's something I was inclined towards. So my journey again was fascination with computers first then took computers all through my college. Mm -hmm. And then as my career grew on that fork in the road, I ended up deciding to go down the management path, but still in the tech industry though. Yeah. And uh, I want to, I want to spend some time today on, on just some of the advice that you've given throughout the book. So we're going to, we're going to, of course, do a deep dive into that. And I want to hear some other stories too, that I, I'm sure you, you're, you're held back on in the book, but let, let's just dive right in here. So from good worker to great manager, as you've gone through your career, 
I know that there was a point in time maybe when you you hit that management level. And I have to say, like, do you feel you were prepared, not prepared? And I'm asking this question, by the way, just because I know there's a lot of others that hit that because that that are in that position. So how did how did you deal with that, that like bump up in terms of responsibility? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question, Adam. I think uh, the way I was promoted, if you may, to a manager was, hey, looks like Kinar is doing a great job on the technical front. Yeah. He's kind of so-called the tech lead. Let's make him a manager, right? Mm -hmm. And it seemed like the right thing to do at that time. I felt great to kind of take on that responsibility. I, was, I felt I was ready. Mm -hmm. I think the realization looking back is people management is a whole different discipline. So it felt like I was just learning to swim and I was thrown on the deep end of the pool with not enough guidance, right? I think over the course of so many years, we've learned that, you know, pe people management is a skill but I still feel like that there's more that can be done to kind of grow, you know, engineers before they're ready to take on that role. Mm -hmm. So for me, the journey along the lines has been, was I prepared? Absolutely not. When I took on this role, uh, I've learned a lot from making a lot of the mistakes along the way. You know, I call out some of the things which I've learned through some really good managers and also I call out some references as well. But yeah, it's uh, early on was a, a bit of a bumpy road in management for me. So, you know, stuff mm -hmm. that I, talk about it. I wish I had known when I became a manager. Yeah. And I, and I asked that question and not to pick on you. Cause that's the, just because I know there's a lot of individuals that are watching this and they're like, that's what happened to me. Like people can relate, right? Like that's yeah. the way many people are, especially I've had other coaches and individuals on here that maybe do some other types of coaching, other, other management training. And they say, and I guess the, one of the consensus that I've heard after doing many, many interviews is that that's kind of the process for a lot of people, not just yeah. in engineering, but I know, I know that's your specialty, but in general, like somebody you're doing a good job and all of a sudden somebody one day you're like you know what we're gonna promote you to manager like 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 not good luck they don't say it like that but it's not like okay so now we're gonna start this intensive management training program and equip you with the skills and this that and it's like no we need you to produce still and now you're responsible for this this and this as well right <laughs> yeah so it, it, it's a very something very you know deep and something very interesting you said yeah. that adam the when you are transitioned into a manager role, mm -hmm. two things I think that you mentioned are very important. You know, I think sometimes it happens that you're given two roles all at the one shot mm -hmm. is, oh, please go manage this team, which means now you are managing the deliverables of this whole team. Yeah. So you're responsible for the delivery of this whole team. But please continue doing what you were doing as well before, right? Especially um, on the sales and, side. I'll pick on the people out there running <laughs> sales teams, right? Especially on the sales side. Continue, Kinar. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it, 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 it is, I think sometimes it comes across if, you know, your manager has, if, if they have been seasoned enough and they understand that this is a whole of a process and a discipline, if you don't have that sometimes, but you're right, you kind of, you kind of are given that responsibility implicitly and it becomes a very tough challenge for a first time manager to navigate through it, right? So you basically stumble along because at that point, you know, everything that we're going to talk about next, I think kind of, you kind of hits you a little bit harder at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right, let, let's dive further into the content here. So we're going to pick out some themes and some things, and I want to definitely unpack them. So one of the things that you mentioned are finding a mentor. Now I can speak from my, from my life and my perspective, like I've had mentors. I mean, I was, I was very fortunate to have been introduced to that concept, probably in my teenage years by my mother, who was a social worker for many, many years before retiring, but she kind of guided me down that path of finding and introducing mentors into my life who maybe had an expertise in a field or in a thing that my parents didn't have like for example finance like they weren't they didn't have strong financial backgrounds but i had a big interest in business so they introduced those mentors so i was kind of in, indoctrinated into that concept pretty young on and i've always kind of carried that belief but i'm interested in the context of how why you chose to introduce this piece into the book yeah i mentioned that becoming a people manager and I, you know, I'm kind of targeting this for maybe mainly the first time managers uh, yeah. an individual kind of contributor becoming a manager. There are so many new things you have to learn because it's a completely new discipline, right? If you have to do it all by yourself, can you do it? Yes. It's just going to take you longer, assuming you have the right resources and the right support from your manager, right? Yeah. Your manager's manager, right? At that point. Yeah. But in the absence of that, how do you make sure you learn some of those things without having to make all of those mistakes, but learn it faster, right? Mm -hmm. 
in today's day and age, we say we want more and we want it faster, right? That's <laughs> kind of becoming the mantra, right? Everybody wants it faster. And I think I would actually prefer in this day and age, if I didn't have to make all the mistakes that someone prior has made, but rather learn from those mistakes and effectively actually deliver what I would like to deliver. So you can focus on learning and focus on delivering. And this is where the concept as a mentor actually comes in. So for me, it actually did not come that naturally, Adam, right? Mm -hmm. I had a few of the folks because I was very heads down into being an IC. I loved, you know, programming and coding and I stayed there, but I'll, I'll kind of give you one of these, you know, stories and an example on how one of my prior, you know, managers helped me through this transition, right? He said something was very, very useful for me. Hopefully it'll be useful for other viewers too. So when I was kind of stuck in my role, I shouldn't say stuck, but more importantly, I was thinking, how do I go? I'm a senior engineer now, I can become a manager or I can go become kind of an architect. At that point I was, so I felt like in my head I was stuck, right? Yeah. When I started talking with a few folks who made this journey, you know, everyone had that story. So when you talk with individual engineers, they may probably give you a little bit more biased opinion of becoming, hey, you should become more of a tech person. You are already there. But I started speaking to some of the managers who've been there, done that, right? And one of my prior managers who had actually hired me for my first role within the US, right? He said something really interesting because he knew me well. You know, he hired me, he had seen me work, right? And he basically told me, I think you should become a manager. And he told me the reason is it's an opportunity cost. And I said, what do you mean by that? Right. And his point was, if you're going to be an individual contributor, sometimes your work looks at what is it, the output you can produce, mm -hmm. right? Which is what you have to always look at. I am me. I only have so many hours in a day. There's mm -hmm. only so much I can produce, but if I want to have a bigger impact, a larger impact, you got to do it with a team and a manager basically facilitates, works with the team, manages that team to amplify that output, right? You yeah. take the out, like the output that team produces, you unblock them, you coach them, you grow their capability, right? To become that. And his point was, remember, it comes with a trade-off. You got to let go of something that you're doing. It's like unlearning what you just know and yeah. relearn some new skills, but it's an opportunity cost. And knowing me, he gave me that feedback. I still yeah. remember that, that conversation so well because I always, when I'm looking at something new, some yeah. new discipline thing, I always think about what is the opportunity cost for me and the business? Mm. And is that the right thing for me to do? Any, any, any tips or tricks on, on how to find the right mentor out there for those listening? Yeah, that's, I, I can, I, I will get into how I ran into my mentor. I've called it out in the book as well. His name is Anil Katri. Oh. But before I get into that, to answer your question in like where I am right now at Amazon, mm -hmm. in larger companies, there are formal mentorship programs where, uh, you know, managers and senior managers can sign up to become a mentor and then mentees go find. So there's, there's ways you can do that in larger companies. In smaller companies, if you don't have that, I would say you should talk to your network and figure out if someone who knows you well enough, you know, a, a, a mentor and a mentee relationship is very unique, right? Mm. If you get someone who's a mentor that doesn't know you well, you may probably get good enough guidance, but it will be hard to relate sometimes, mm -hmm. right? So you got to find that right balance where they know you well enough so that the, ad the advice that you're getting is kind of a little bit more tailored, right? So that would be another. And the third would be really reaching out through networks like LinkedIn and others that you can probably find some as well. Yeah, it's great. I want to jump around a bit here because there's some other themes that I definitely want to address that, that you brought up in the book. One of them being now you have a new challenge, time. You have a new thing to manage. So not, not, just, your, not just your employees, but time. So tell me a little bit more about your, your discovery on that side of things. So maybe the question is, how do you manage your time as a manager, right? Or oh, yeah. if you're becoming a first time manager, even oh, by yeah. the way, it's, it's true, even if you are a seasoned manager, right? Mm -hmm. So the way I'll start off is, is when you become a manager, you know, one of your primary responsibility becomes is unblocking your team, right? Because mm -hmm. remember the primary goal is not delivering through others as opposed to you delivering. Yeah. So if your team is blocked on something, your overall productivity could be blocked by significantly more than just your own productivity. So you got to do that. Now at that point, what happens is, mm -hmm. you know, early in my career, I felt like I was doing like a thousand things at the same time, right? Yeah. Everyone's coming to me, asking me questions, asking me to unblock, you know, it could be 
related to a specific, you know, code that they're writing. It could be about a product and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So my learning and my message to anyone becoming, you know, who transitions into a manager is, you know, we'll go back to this whole model as well, which I talk about as one, do a one-on-one -on -one time with your directs. So mm -hmm. that way, once a week, you have 30 minutes that you can answer all that questions in one shot. So hopefully that will reduce a little bit of your distraction and yeah. focus your time on something that you want to do. Second, you may want to start building topic-based conversations. You know, I think you've got to start abstracting out that, signal from the noise, right? I think there's sometimes there's a lot of chat, a lot of noise. You've got to structure yeah. it saying, hey guys, these are three same conversations. Why don't we take it here so that mm -hmm. all three of us can speak here in this one forum, right? And mm -hmm. nowadays we have got digital tools and all that you could like create channels and stuff where you could have same conversation and you're not the only one unblocking them, but you could create other group of people who could do that. But I think the trick comes down to is once you have all of these efficiencies and kind of these processes in place, you still got to find time for yourself and your work, right? Mm -hmm. And that will go back to a little bit more of your personal preference. Like I'm a morning person. Mm -hmm. I try and carve out a little bit of the time in the morning to make sure I'm caught up on like emails I have to read or some heads down work I have to do and kind of work with the team on that. Mm -hmm. And everyone will have to kind of find that mechanism too. But yeah, it, it starts to get a little bit more challenging when you transition from IC to a manager and managing yeah. your time. Yeah, I, I can see that. And that skill set is not, it's not intuitive. I mean, it's not for anybody listening to this, like you're not, I mean, different. I like that you said that you carve out the time where you want, but people have to find their own cadence, right? Like there's not a yes. one size fits all for this or am I off? Yeah, that's true. That's very yeah. true. Mm -hmm. So I feeling one thing that you talk about and one of the concepts is you have a, a kind of a specific process. And I know we've talked a little bit about it, but I do want to kind of encapsulate this a bit. So you have a, you know, a four step process, maybe give us an overview of that. So before I jump into that process, I also want to call out that these are the four behaviors mm -hmm. that are expected of a manager. And I've listed out in the book, I'll call it out here as well. The, mm -hmm. the, the material that I learned from is called manager-tools.com. You know, mm -hmm. there are, there's a fascinating resource. And what I've really liked about them is it's actionable management feedback. You know, mm -hmm. until I actually found that resource, I felt like management was a little bit more, oh, you like this, you should do this. I mm -hmm. think this is the best practice. But I never knew a management advice could be very actionable too. So there's a very actionable feedback there on advice there. So the four, the four behaviors, right, that are expected of a manager, and you know, the earlier you know, the better you can operate is. Mm -hmm. The first one is to get to know your people, which is by doing one-on-ones, weekly one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. uh, second one is to provide continuous and ongoing feedback, which helps improve future behaviors for your directs. Uh, then it's coaching and then it's delegation, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the four models. Now, if you are kind of getting into people management for the first time, mm -hmm. I generally coach my, you know, my managers who are new to saying, do the first two, that's going to be the most effective. Mm -hmm. If you truly get to know your people and you do the one on, that's a great way to start building relationships and yeah. relationships, building stronger relationships, build trust. So just to give a little nuance view on that one, right? Mm -hmm. The one-on-ones has become a cliche in the industry now. You talk to mm -hmm. anyone and everyone says, yes, you have to have a one-on-one, -on -one, right? I think there are some fundamental principles of a one-on-one. -on -one. I, I, I wish more people knew. I think a lot of people know, but still more people knew is the one-on-ones is never for the manager. It's actually for your direct, yeah. right? It's for your direct to get your time and attention so you're not focused on anything else except give them that time, right? Mm -hmm. And when you give that undivided attention and you truly show that you care, mm -hmm. that's when actually the big change happens. That's where the trust mm -hmm. gets built. I feel like in this virtual world with pandemic, I realized that that turned out to be even more important mm -hmm. to be able to do that because we are virtual. When we met in person, there was still some in-person interaction we could do. Now, and then the second one, which I will briefly touch on before I can give you like a, maybe a story or two on, on those, how I've learned that as well is, uh, is feedback. When we talk about feedback, the first impression for a manager that comes out is, oh, I just have to give a negative feedback or something that's not good. Mm. Feedback can also be a positive feedback. Something mm. that's been done well by your direct, you can call that out, which is, I think, done a little bit more lesser by first time managers, because you know, they're going through their own motions of letting go mm. of something that they thought did well, but now you have to kind of come out and, you know, appreciate your directs as well. Yeah. So feedback and one-on-ones are kind of the heart of it. And then coaching and delegations as follows as well. 
Hmm. Can you go further into that concept of relationships and that relationship, that professional relationship, right? Being built in like how important that is, especially when you're working on like big projects or things that are going to, you know, like these are long-term individuals that are, that you're working with hopefully, right? Like talk yes. a little bit more about your concept of relationship and what that means. Cause that that's been big for me in my career. Yeah. I think uh, getting to know your direct and I'll give you like, I'll start yeah. with an example. So that way I think it, it can relate as a story. One mm -hmm. of my managers, you know, way before Amazon, you know, he and I used to do our one-on-ones over lunch and he used mm -hmm. to walk over to a couple of restaurants that were close by. Mm -hmm. And one thing I got to know from him when, when we used to walk over there is the variety of topics that he knew about. He was a very seasoned executive and he could talk everything when we walk past by a golf course, you know, everything about golf. And I, I bought a new car and I showed it to him and he knew all quite a bit of stuff about the cars. And mm -hmm. I was just very fascinated. Like, how did you learn? So I could see how well rounded he was, not just mm -hmm. at work. See, we all get promoted to a certain level because we can do the job well, right? Yeah. If you can't do the job well, obviously you are not going to be where you are. But being to able to see the other side of your manager and op it helps your directs open up to that possibility saying, the manager has more sides to it. They are also human and you can kind of relate to them, right? Yeah. From there, what really starts is the more fundamental principle is a manager can show that they really care. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was going through a tough time personally when I was working with this manager mm -hmm. and this manager would actually remember specific times when some things were supposed to happen. Wow. He used to actually call me before that, just make sure I was doing okay. Hmm. And that care till today, like imagine this was almost 10 years ago. Wow. I still remember those instances because I would do anything for that manager today. And I, I want to give you one more little example to kind of close this, this story out. So he would remember those instances. I would know at the heart of heart that he cared. Now, this kind of a relationship, Adam, is very hard to build, right? When we started with that foundation, then the next thing he did, by the way, I, I, all this stuff I'm talking about is before I even learned this model myself. So this wow. was the manager before I learned this model. But mm -hmm. when I learned the model, I realized how good that manager was because he was actually doing it, you know, without, he, I don't think he even knew the model. He just knew it so well. Yeah. And then what happened was once that foundation was built, where we got to know each other well, I knew he really cared about me. Uh, then he started giving me feedback on some things that I did well. And with the areas where I didn't do well, he will call me and he'll talk about specific saying, Hey, Kinar, in this project, I see you did these three things, but I think you missed out on these two. You know, you should have not just given kind of the resourcing stuff. You should talk about strategy. That's what I expected out of you and all. I can tell you almost like any instance, if you would pick up from my conversation with that manager. Anytime he gave me kind of so-called a negative feedback, I would want to do it so well the next time. I never wanted to disappoint him. Yeah. But that only came in. Like I, I kept on thinking over and over again, why is it? And what did this manager do? Because I wanted to emulate that behavior. I was a manager too. And it occurred to me much later in my career is that because he cared, that feedback made so much sense because there was a lot of trust there, right? Yeah. So when we talk about relationships and trust, right? I know exactly where this person is coming from. I truly know they care and all they want is for me to improve. There's no other agenda. There is no other malice there. There's nothing else there. And I think that's why in, even in my book, when I list out those four steps, they are in that order. Because if you skip the step, it really is not going to have that kind of an impact. If you don't build those relationships, you're not going to get the value of your feedback that you're providing because it's not going to be based on something. But anyway, I just wanted to give these couple examples that this is how I feel building relationships is the first step. Then you can see the impact of the feedback that you provide and the change in behaviors in your direction, your team. Yeah, it's a great example and a great story. And I know for anybody else that's had a great manager in your life that you, you, you're and you're reverse engineering this in your mind right now, you're probably like, oh yeah, they did the same thing for me. You know, that person and many years later, I have one, Doug, I know Doug was a great manager in my life and I've had actually many, I've been pretty fortunate in my career to have great managers in my corporate career. So I was just lucky, I guess. But I want to, let's spend some time when we went through a couple of them. I think you got, you got a couple more for me. So, uh, so let's say that, how do we get to that, let's say third and fourth step in the process? Yeah. So this is where I'll bring up my mentor. So I know the th third step is coaching and yep. then it's delegation. Yeah. So on the coaching side, I'll bring up my mentor. You know, I 
and by the way, I should explain how I use the word mentor and coaching, you know, as a coach or a mentor, right? How do I use them interchangeably or not, right? For me, a mentor is someone that knows you well enough, uh, mm -hmm. but can also give you a little bit more tactical advice, right? Which says, hey, in this situation, I think these are the three steps you should do. Whereas mm -hmm. a coach is someone that gives a little bit more strategic advice, right? Which says, hey, if you look out further in your career by, let's say, six months or a year, mm -hmm. this is what it means for you. Now, it's very interesting that they both can be looked at separately, but I think having them together is really the best of both worlds, right? Mm -hmm. So you want someone that can be a mentor at times when needed, but also can be a coach when needed, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I was very fortunate to have Anil in my career. I'll kind of quickly give that story as well. By the way, prior to Amazon, for any, any of the listeners who don't know, I know Adam, you know that is, uh, my journey has been primarily been in startups, almost 20 mm -hmm. years in startups. But the last five years before joining Amazon, I was kind of, uh, you know, head of engineering reporting to founder CEOs. Mm -hmm. And in one of the companies, you know, we had our co-founder CTO for some health reason he had to leave. Right. Mm -hmm. And when he left, you know, I basically inherited the whole team and he and I were supposed to tag team building and then delivering for a major client six months down the line. And our, and our CEO observed that and he quickly realized because I was a month in, into that role. I was just a month into the company. Like I was a brand new into the company and he quickly realized saying, Hey, I may need a little bit more assistance mm -hmm. on how to kind of not just deliver on this next thing, but really also help me grow. So the company can grow as well. Right. So he, mm -hmm. he invited Anil. So I very clearly remember my first meeting with Anil, which was in kind of one of the it was one of these plug and play centers because we were a very small startup, you know, in these uh, places. And he was there and he, he kept on asking me questions. What do you think about this product? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. And I really liked how he was without knowing much about me or the product. He was able to ask all these great, valuable questions. You are to gather insights and he was able to st even start telling me. I remember very clearly in the very first meeting I said, Hey, would you be able to help me like coach me through this process and be my mentor? And he said something is that it starts with the desire. If you have the desire to be coached, I will be an effective mentor or a coach to you. Mm. If you don't have that desire, this is never going to work. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I took it with a grain of salt saying, I'm probably saying this in the moment. I should think about it too. And then I took, <laughs> I took my time when we interacted with a couple of a couple of meetings and you know, seven years down the line, I think we are still connected. He's helped me through yeah. so many different transitions and so many different, you know, things that I've been through uh, to get yeah. to where I am today. Wow. That, that is an amazing story. And, uh, and I'm, I'm laughing because you're saying, wait a minute, I'm in the moment too. Maybe I need to take a step back and think about it. I, I would figure that much out of you, Kanar. You'd be like, wait a minute. No, we need to think about this. A bunch of engineers getting together. <laughs> It, it's a, it's classic. You know, I love it. It's good. Yeah. It's you, because it also shows your thought process, right? And how much you yeah. care and how methodical and like the individuals. And I think on, on the mentor side of things too, for those out there that, you know, will serve as mentors for others, like that was really gold. What you said, it has to start with the desire. And I know that was given to you by your mentor, but I would challenge, especially individuals that maybe don't have quite as much structured mentorship, like, like a great company, like Amazon what provides, right? Like some that are out there looking like you gotta, it is in relationship all in its own, right? That's true. That is very true. Yeah. So right. I, I think we touched on, this is kind of the mentorship. So I would yep. say, please do get a mentor that can help you look around the bend, mm -hmm. help you kind of look around things that you may not see uh, mm -hmm. and really tell you the scope of what you're signing up for and all of that stuff. And then last is delegation which I feel is a way to kind of stretch your directs where you can mm -hmm. take items that they are not familiar with right now, mm -hmm. but have them stretch into so they can deliver. And a couple of ways to do delegation is either you can give them some tasks that you own, explain it to them really well so they can do it. Or I think like I've seen now, like even my manager did me was, Hey, can you fill in for me? So I'm filling in for my manager in front of his manager. So I'm actually in, 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 in my skip level meeting and I would go and represent him and my org. And that way you can learn a lot because you see what they are seeing on that topic and you kind of learn, you come back and you grow. So again, delegations are the next steps where you help your drag get to the next level. The first two are to really make sure you get the most out of them. The next two steps are really to help them grow into the next level. 
So I want to also, I want to spend some time that we have left here on, on one of the other points that you made. And this is a big one, I think, as for the first time manager, but I don't even know. I'd say for the middle manager, I'd say for the sometimes even the C-level exec. And that is really the idea of imposter syndrome syndrome, and how that can kind of creep or rear its head into the, into the equation. Like what's been your experience with that piece? Because I thought it was interesting that you chose to include it. Yeah. Imposter syndrome is real. You know, we've heard it in the industry when we say fake it till you make it, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's also been the term that's been used. Yeah. I would say rather than running away from it, which is kind of the first, you know, fight or flight feeling that we all get as managers sometimes saying, this is true or this is not true. I think we should all take a moment and absorb it saying, this is a feeling I have. It's okay to have that feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Again, I've learned it through my journey. That's one big message if I had to give first time managers, that's one I would give. But there's also a very structured approach to how to overcome it, which I talk about in the book, but I'll kind of give a quick, uh, quick insight here is, when you go from an individual contributor to a manager, you know, individual contributors has very defined boundaries. You say, I start this work and I finish it. Mm -hmm. When you become a manager, you got to start relying on the process yeah. as opposed to the just, you know, obviously you have outcomes too, but a lot of it is process. Mm -hmm. People change is take a while. Sometimes they feel like they're ongoing all the time. So you got to get comfortable with the process. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about imposter syndrome, you got to pick an area that you feel you are uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. If possible, work with your mentor mm -hmm. and kind of get those smallest wins and get comfortable with it saying, I took one baby step towards the right direction and that's okay for today. Mm -hmm. And then you continue to take that and then you kind of overcome one area after another. Mm -hmm. And that's how your imposter syndrome grows, right? Goes away, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the that's a technique, but then the patience level required to kind of go through that, you know, the temperament that you require to go through that is very different because your team's looking up to you. You feel, you know, it's a self-imposed pressure sometimes on the first time manager saying, mm -hmm. oh, I, my team's looking up to me be the most confident, the person who's done this before, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. How do I kind of travel from that? And this is the way you go about it, right? Just being very candid and transparent, but it's one small baby step at a time, but being very aware of which area you're tackling at one point in time. Yeah. And, and it's not like a, there's to me, it's part of the journey is the way I look at it. So meaning, yeah. and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I mean, and in different points in your career, going from your first management position to, you know, your second to now, you know, many, many years later, you know, over at Amazon managing a, a large team, does it come back? Like, it, does it come back as you hit each new, let's just say rung on the ladder? Yes, it does. Yes, yeah. it does. I think that's a short answer. It does come back. Again, the answer is again the same, right? When you become more seasoned, I guess mm -hmm. you can you can observe it in yourself without mm -hmm. a mentor kind of pointing it out, right? Yeah. So what you can do is you can be your own mentor sometimes yeah. to kind of tackle some of these challenges that you know there's a process to go about it. Mm -hmm. You may not know what the outcome will be, but that's the baby <laughs> steps you can take. So like it happened to me here as well. Yeah. That sometimes I felt like, hey, I do not know much about it. Yeah. And I feel like I'm an imposter. But yeah. again, the way I do it is I break down that problem to make sure I have a good understanding. If not, I go talk to all the experts. And then I put very small milestones, either working with my manager or mm -hmm. with my mentors and saying, hey, is this the right goal to achieve? Yeah. Will that get me to where I want to really? Right. <laughs> and that process also leads to getting clarifying yeah. your thoughts. Like, is this really the thing you want to shoot for? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. Right. So you clarify your goals and then you take steps towards that. But yeah, it happens. It's real. I've spoken to enough executives at Amazon and outside that this is real. But I think the steps and the journey, I think, remain the same, though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see it. And I, and the reason why I asked that question and the reason why, even when we started the conversation on this section, I'm like, I, people get into the CEO seat for the first time. Right. And, they, and they're like, they work their way up and, you know, different companies, startups or whatever, they start their own company. Like there's different ways of, of, of seeing this, this issue. But the good part about what I like and what you propose in the book is you proposed a method, right? And then you can keep reapplying that method in your life as you, as you hit different rungs in the ladder, as I mentioned. So I think it's awesome. 
So I want to spend a little bit of time talking about, I know we've, you've talked a lot about the, the tools and things that you've created and obviously the book, of course, and I want everybody that's watching this, go pick up a copy of that. There's a link to it in the, uh, in the show notes. So don't forget that part, but I want to talk a little bit more about like your career and like your plans for the future. I know you're with a great company, Amazon, anything you care to talk about that's on, on your vision for, let's just say 2023 and going forward. Yeah, so I've been at Amazon now for about two and a half years mm -hmm. and counting. So this is, I think I mentioned, you know, prior career has been all in startups. Mm -hmm. uh, a little fun fact here is that uh, most of my prior companies, my parents couldn't even remember the name for which companies I worked for. <laughs> at least now they know which company I at least worked for, which is kind of a <laughs> yeah, good mom and dad. <laughs> so finally they feel like, oh, so you're working for a good company now. And that's, that's how they would frame it again, you know, different generation. Of course, right? your um, parents, they have but, to. <laughs> yeah. They're very proud, which actually makes me feel good too. Over here, we build, you know, it was a confidential project, but we've already launched some product called Buy With Prime. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, very excited for what this product can do. Obviously, I'm working on something really cool and special. So mm -hmm. wait for it to get launched. I cannot talk about it here. I so knew, but I was trying. I'm a big Amazon <laughs> fan. You can't blame me for trying, Kanar. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know, Amazon is customer obsessed mm -hmm. and I really like that part, right? When you grow in your career, you kind of start realizing, starting being customer obsessed and working backwards from there, how much benefit it provides you because you actually end up working on the right thing. So yeah. the great team that we have here, I believe the product is pretty powerful. It's a lot of it is in the news you can read. So 2023 for me is to go continue build on that success, mm -hmm. uh, help you know, the program get even further heights, grow it further. As far as my passion on, you know, you know, mentoring and growing engineers, I still do that at Amazon and even outside, you know, there are as time permits, you know, I do that, but I'm very, it's very satisfying for me that I still continue to do that. So in the future, you know, I don't know, five years down the line or something like that, we'll have to see how I'm able to take this passion further. But for now it's. It's Amazon growing at Amazon and the yeah. initiative we have along with, you know, keeping a little bit of that time to continue to grow this, this yeah. uh, passion that I have. Yeah, I think it's great. And the way, and I see, and in my experience, a lot of the, the great programs out there, and I know there's many different things that you can, that you can explore, whether it's, you know, public speaking on, on the topic, whether it's coaching programs, whether it's like a lot of different things, I think it's interesting and people take their expertise in corporate America and they help people do things as well on the side and take their time, you know, over and above, which takes time and resources and effort to help others, even when it's not necessarily at their, at their corporate career side of things because that's a, it's a whole nother a whole nother thing to, to accomplish but i i think it's interesting I, i'm a big fan of your topic and and also the brand that you're building around it really helping just go from individual contrib contributors to great managers i think it's a great one of the reasons i was thrilled to publish it a uh, content by the way is just because i see the long-term possibility of the brand what you're doing and the huge need for it in the market and the fact that you get to synthesize that information put it together put it in things like the book that that we released together i mean i just think it's amazing and i uh, wish you much more continued success with it and building that brand but that being said kanar as people are watching this and uh, and moved by your message and want to connect i mean what's the best way for people to uh, to connect and to follow your journey i would say right now i think the best way to connect is probably one on one on linkedin please note that my time is limited so i'll probably address and you know chat with a few people over there it's linkedin yeah. i think is the best message as I get to a little bit more formalizing a strategy mm -hmm. to kind of scale this idea of how to take mentorship to the next level, then I think it will be a different channel as well. But right now it's primarily LinkedIn. Yeah, that's awesome. And we'll put the, uh, and we'll put the link to your LinkedIn profile in the show notes. And, uh, and to the audience that are tuning in, just want to say, hey, thank you for tuning in. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. I hope you learned a lot from Kanar. I sure did and will continue to learn from Kanar. And if you're interested and this is great content to you, then just definitely hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Kanar, really, it has been a pleasure. I know we're just getting started with the book promo. Look forward to, to continue promoting this book and also your brand. So thanks again for coming on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Adam.